Hello everybody and welcome back to William's Return to Glory. This should be the final episode that shows races of this season. Um, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to handle the off season. If I'm going to do like an episode 12 where we go through the off season or if I do just a quick overview. Um, I guess I'll, I'm just going to find out when I get there. But yeah, uh, this episode we have Interlagos and we have Yas Marina. So we're on the pit crew screen. We're just going to rotate around some people real quick. All right, so we've uh, gone through and rotated everybody. I think this is uh, as good as we're going to get. Looking at the mail, we've got stuff about Mexico. We've got an interview with Autosport. They're saying Hamilton easily won the last race, finishing ahead of Verstappen by 33 seconds. Do you agree with me that F1 is too predictable at the moment? Well, I would consider that a, uh, yeah, I know this series is a fantastic display of engineering excellence. That's what the sport is all about. So from the headquarters screen, uh, I'm looking at our upgrades. Uh, we're currently working on the engine uh, test track, but I think we're going to just bite the bullet, take the design center. We're going to get a lot of money for next year anyways. So I think uh, spending this now and just having this for next year is uh, a good investment. All right, so getting ready for the Brazilian Grand Prix. Uh, typical Lavazza 1055, no changes on the parts. We've got heavy rain in practice, but dry for the rest of the weekend. Let's go to Brazil. Getting ready for practice. Uh, I am actually going to go with the hardest set of compound here because I believe um, we've gone with the medium compound is like the perfect one, and we're only going to get really one shot uh, and getting kind of perfect. So because um, we got heavy rain kind of halfway through the session. So we're just going to immediately go out and focus on getting the, uh, the tires correct, and then we're going to focus on getting the, the setup correct. So following a mostly dry practice from Brazil, we are 18th and, 9th, or 18th and 20th, and top of the board is Max Verstappen. So getting ready for qualifying. Uh, we were able to get at least just one level of qualifying trim. I was actually pretty impressed uh, that I was able to get uh, level 3 on the uh, the race tire. But uh, level 1 qualifying trim, level 1 sweeter spots, and I actually, for the first time, got 100% set up on Albon. So hopefully that 1% or 2% extra from what we usually get makes a difference, and uh, we'll go on to qualifying. All right, so the TV comes around the final corner. I just need to time when he gets to the line. Ooh, I just need to make sure I can see him. So uh, this grandstand makes it very hard to simulate and see. So one minute, 56 seconds is the latest we can send somebody out. So Latifi comes around the final corner to start his lap. Albon makes it in barely. They're both up. Both up in the middle. And Albon gets ahead of Joe. So following Q1, Lance Stroll, Sebastian Vettel, Alex Albon, Guan Yu Zhou, and Nicholas Latifi are eliminated. Following Q2, Sergio Perez, Valtteri Bottas, George Russell, Mick Schumacher, and Charles Leclerc are eliminated after a uh, bit of a mixed weather Q2. Alright, let's see who starts on the front row as we see Kevin Magnussen made it into Q3. So your front row for the Brazilian Grand Prix are going to be Verstappen and Hamilton because uh, Charles Leclerc did not advance into Q3. 
So on the grid for the Brazilian Grand Prix, we have medium tires up to level 3, and we also have race trim up to level 3. Uh, I'm glad we did choose the medium tire, because uh, just like last race, soft tire would not be able to make the one stop. Um, and with us having uh, level 3 on the medium tires, hopefully our, uh, our car deficit and the deficit these tires give kind of get a, a little bit cushioned by this, uh, this knowledge token. Uh, setup, got the 100% setup on Albon. Driver strategy, we're going to go push overtake, but I need to make sure that I, uh, after the first lap, put it on neutral because these tires do not like cooling down. And that's about it. On to the starting grid. So the starting grid for the Brazilian Grand Prix at Interlagos, you have Max Verstappen on pole, followed by honorary Brazilian Lewis Hamilton, Carlos Sainz, Pierre Gasly, Lando Norris, Fernando Alonso, Yuki Tsunoda, Daniel Ricciardo, Esteban Ocon, Kevin Magnussen, Sergio Perez, Valtteri Bottas, George Russell, Mick Schumacher, Charles Leclerc, Lance Stroll, Sebastian Vettel, Alex Albon, Guan Yu Zhou, Nicholas Latifi. So here are the five red lights. You see we have the bottom eight cars all on the medium tires. And we've got a bunch of those people out front kind of stuck on those used tires from Q3. So hopefully we can take advantage of that. All right, so we're immediately going to put these on a neutral because these tires are just going to burn up. We're going to put them on a high as well just so we can kind of maintain engine mode. Uh, for a longer period of time. So Ocon has already dropped back to 19th just on those those worn tires. You see uh, Norris and Ricardo are in 10th and 11th. They're just kind of hovering there. So everyone up there looks like they're going to have to pit early as we see Carlos Sainz pitting. He is six seconds behind us currently at the moment. We're going to have uh, a couple other people pitting here as we see Gasly pitting. He's going to come out behind us as well. And we look good to one-stop this, so they're going to have to... Oh, got a crash for Perez. Haven't had one of those in a while. Okay, no caution. Thought that was going to be a safety car. Alright, we got a bunch of guys behind us pitting. Just double-checking the weather. You never know if it's going to change from saying it's going to be clear to actually getting weather. So you got a lot of the fast guys behind us currently who've uh, kind of been stuck with that uh, that dumb Q2 tire rule. That doesn't look like something we're going to have to worry about next year with the, uh, the one round. So we're currently on lap 8. Not too worried. we got to make it to 23 to kind of make these tires last. Our wear is a little high at the moment. So I think we're going to drop both of them down to conserve until they get on the uh, the cusp of uh, just getting the tires cold. We've got the low fuel delta. Um, this isn't like last race, so I don't think we're going to have the... Uh, or we are going to probably get lapped, but I think the, uh, the odds of us getting lapped sooner are between our next pit stop is pretty low, so we're going to keep them on high until they hit about 1.3, and then we're going to get them off of conserve. So Hamilton sets the fastest lap. He's currently out front. Albon is in 13th, doing pretty well, 14 laps in. It's battling Joe, who qualified behind us and is on the same set of tires, or, you know. All right. We're going to go neutral, medium, neutral, medium. Be able to keep the tires a little bit less worn for that period of the race. Got a little bit more tire left than Joe. Hopefully we can kind of pull one over on some people here as we see Stroll got investigated for something. Stroll's going to have to pit. As well as Schumacher, who's all the way up into sixth place. Tifi is dead last at the moment. Yeah, and Schumacher pits ahead of us, and he's going to have fresh tires, so that's unfortunate for us. All right, we got to make these things last a little bit longer, but I'm not too confident. All right, we're just going to put 
Albon and Latifi on conserve. We're just going to have Albon hold some people up here. Tires are getting pretty low on wear, so we're going to probably make a little bit of a gap here. All right, so this is when we're pitting, so we're committing to this, this strategy. Okay, we're going to pit Latifi and Albon, same lap. We're going to balance them, and then we're going to have them conserve out of the pits. We've got Magnuson behind us on the soft tire. I'm pretty sure he's going to have to pit, so if he can't get by us, it's not too bad. We're going to actually just let these tires go all the way until they're cold, and hopefully we don't see Albon kind of losing a ton of pace on these fresh sets of tires. We got Ricardo, who's gonna have the pit next, but I think he's gonna pit and be able to come out ahead of us. And he does. We got Magnuson in 17th, and he just passes us. It's on the softer compound. We got Joe behind us, who Joe looks like he's gonna have to pit as well. So, and it looks like our tires got a little bit too cold. So hopefully that us uh, being able to put this on to, or and let's see if he gets a blue flag. So he has been overtaken. One less lap to do. All right, Latifi gets blue flags again as we see Albon get his first. All right, we're going to have him attack just for a little bit, just to get the tire temperature into the, the tires. All right, that's good. All right, so we don't have to pit for the rest of this race, I don't believe, so... We're going to have TP push, and then not push. Just kind of maintain some tire wear. As we're going to start falling hard, hopefully Magnuson and Ocon can all get caught up with some of these laps as Guan Yu Zhou crashes out of the race. That is a spot, but unfortunately that's the one spot that I thought we could get on pace. I was very confident we were going to be able to get on pace. Alright, as Albon is in 17th, unfortunately, I saw Stroll pit, but Stroll pitted and pitted as soon as the, the leaders pitted, so he doesn't have to lose out on blue flags like we are to third place Leclerc. Leclerc making a really, really good recovery drive. All right, we're gonna put both these guys on a conserve. I believe that's important for them at the end of the race. Looks like everyone ahead of us has fresher tires except for Ricardo, but Ricardo's about 40 seconds ahead of us, so it looks like we are not going to gain any spots as Alonzo crashes out and gave, gives us a spot. So hopefully we see some more crashes here. Those can be to our benefit. Latifi gets another blue flag. We're just going to have Albon conserve just a little bit on the fuel, just so he can make sure that he makes it. Alright, we need to save fuel. Oh, 
All right, so a 16th and 17th place finish due to DNFs. So following a very crash-filled Brazilian Grand Prix, uh, Nicholas Latifi finishes 17th, Albon finishes 16th. We have Alonso, Joe, and Perez all DNFing. Uh, Perez DNFing helps Ferrari's uh, very minimal title hopes, but our points for this race are Pierre Gasly. Mick Schumacher gets points. So that means that Haas are now two points ahead of us at the moment. Very, very, very disappointing. Uh, Lando Norris in eighth, Botas in seventh, Yuki Sonoda in sixth, the Ferrari pair of Sainz and Leclerc fifth and fourth, your podium, George Russell, Max Verstappen, your driver's champion for this year, and the winner, Lewis Hamilton. Looking at the driver's championship, uh, the bottom six have been busted as Mick Schumacher is up to 15th place in the uh, the driver's standings with two points. Uh, Joe Magnussen, uh, Albon, Stroll, and Latifi have no points. There's one race left to do so. Um, I did not think Haas were going to get points, but uh, good job on them for doing so. Uh, just kind of sucks for our situation. Uh, you see Yuki Tsunoda has moved ahead of Esteban Ocon as they are tied on points. Botas moves ahead of Alonso. Alonso DNFing out of the race. And Botas carrying Alfa Romeo on his back. Looking at the top of the grid, nothing changes. Verstappen still your uh, driver's champion at the moment. I say at the moment, what did I mean? The driver's champion of this year. Looking at the Constructors Championship, nothing has changed uh, pecking order wise, but Haas, with their two points, have now a very, very uh, secured lead over us. So if we score a point next race, that's not good enough. It looks like we're going to have to finish uh, ninth to even tie Haas and uh, maybe three to get by them. Uh, very, very hard to do, but. Uh, fingers crossed some shenanigans can happen and we have an opportunity to do so next race. From the pit crew screen, we're just going to go through and rotate people real quick. Alright, we've uh, gone through and renewed everybody on our pit crew. So from the mail screen, actually, for some reason we've got 10 pieces of mail, which is abnormal you usually see like three or four got an interview with Dave Coulthard Perez had a race to forget finishing down in 20th are you surprised by this uncharacteristic display I felt Sergio was really unlucky today bad results happen but I know they are a top driver who will respond with great results hey he's open to discussing terms From the uh, part improvement screen, uh, looking here, we see we've got a great engine that's illegal. It's a medium risk. Uh, I'm going to work on it for the next race. Um, it's not going to be much of a benefit, so we're not going to put it on any of the cars. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, it, make, it makes more sense to just kind of stick with the main one because that's not going to overpass the, the old one. But we've also done the same with the, uh, the illegal front wing. Uh, both of which are going to go in the car at the end of the year uh, after the final race, so these will all go towards next year's performance. Looking at the part design screen, uh, we can kind of see where we're far behind. Uh, we've been able to kind of match everyone uh, with, uh, or the average, with uh, the suspension. We are second best with brakes at the moment. Uh, we're a little bit behind with the, the front wing, still ahead of Haas, uh, behind on the uh, rear wing, uh, but still ahead of Haas. But we're a little bit kind of behind here, but we already have engines that we just built uh, and we're going to max out and hopefully uh, build upon for next season. And I don't think we, uh, I, I just, we're not going to be able to improve any more uh, with, uh, we've already pretty much maxed out what we can do with the engine. So we're going to build another gearbox, but we're going to make this one uh, kind of unrestricted on what we can do with it. From the part design screen, this is the gearbox we're going to go with for next year. Looking here at the uh, 
travel screen. We are just getting ready for the final race of the year. Uh, we're going to put Lavazza on the car. Tire selection, the usual 1055. And we've not changed any parts uh, going into this final weekend. But on to Yas Marina. So from practice, uh, we're going to focus on the uh, the soft tire, which is the uh, the medium range. Um, reason why is because it's a 43 lap race, and these can last about 22, 23 laps. So I'm gonna just just because of the pace difference between the soft and the medium tires, we're just gonna focus on these as kind of our last hoorah. And um, if we can, we'll also focus on the medium. But on to practice. Following practice, uh, Nicholas Latifi was 20th and Alex Albon was 16th. Uh, top of the board was uh, Charles Leclerc. Heading into qualifying, uh, we were unable to focus on uh, uh, qualifying trim. It took too long to get the setup right. Uh, so we're going to do the soft tire, which is uh, the medium range and the uh, sweeter spots for uh, qualifying. Alright, so we need to make sure that we time... Latifi, uh, it looks like this is going to be a long lap, so this is very important for us to kind of get this right. So it took Latifi two minutes and one seconds to get out, so we're going to send out Albon at two minutes five, and we're going to send out Latifi at two minutes fifteen. Let's see what Albon does on his first lap. They're going to go green every sector because obviously it's their first run out. Nothing to improve upon. So two minute three, we saw a two minute flat as uh, qualifying time as you see Verstappen go top of the board. So two minute five, two minute 15. All right, so this is the uh, the last run for Nicholas Latifi, um, or could be the last run if he doesn't advance to Q2 um, of his uh, Williams career as we uh, look to uh, find a replacement for him next year. Albon goes out with another shot at making it to Q2. Latifi crosses the line, so does Albon. Albon is down. Latifi is up. Latifi is up again. Albon is down again. And Albon and Latifi finish 19th and 20th. So final Q1 of the season. Sebastian Vettel, Lance Stroll, Guan Yu Zhou, Alex Albon, and Nicholas Latifi are eliminated. Final Q2 session of the season. Valtteri Bottas, Esteban Ocon, Mick Schumacher, Yuki Tsunoda, and Kevin Magnussen are eliminated. Starting in the front row for the final race of the year are uh, title contenders Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen. So unfortunately I uh, fat fingered and I pressed continue, but um, here's the starting grid of the race and when we get to our drivers I'll tell you what we did. So starting grid for the uh, Abu Dhabi Grand Prix is Charles Leclerc, Max Verstappen, Lewis Hamilton, Sergio Perez, Carlos Sainz, Lando Norris, George Russell, Pierre Gasly. Fernando Alonso, Daniel Ricciardo, Valtteri Bottas, Esteban Ocon, Mick Schumacher, Yuki Tsunoda, Kevin Magnussen, Sebastian Vettel, Lance Stroll, Guan Yu Zhou, and Alex Albon on the soft tire. Um, he's got a level 3 on the soft tire, so that's 15% performance, performance. And then he's got a, uh, a race trim uh, knowledge as well, which is another 15% performance. Uh, we put Latifi on the medium tire, uh, which is the hardest compound at the race, uh, just to kind of put him on something different. He has race trim level 3, and he's got his personal trait, which is uh, medium tires wear more slowly. So we're just going to try to keep him out there, and then probably late in the race we'll pit him either onto the soft or onto the super soft. But on to the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. So the five red lights... And away we go. Albon is already off the pace. Latifi is all the way up to 16th. 
Uh, this is going to be Latifi's final start. Or Williams. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to leave him as a reserve driver or not. Or if we'll look at uh, another option for a reserve driver. Looking here, we're about midway on the tire temperatures. We're going to go on to single speed and we're going to put them both on neutral and high. Just to kind of maintain the tire wear. Uh, specifically for Albon, as we see Latifi's doing a very, very good job with his harder compounds of tire. A lot of moving. Albon is down to 20th. It looks like Al Latifi's doing a very, very good job with his medium tire. It seems like telling him that this is going to be his final race has uh, worked wonders on uh, uh, actually kind of having him uh, perform well. Uh, you see we have got a couple people here who started in the top 10 who um, have kind of dropped back to within reach of us. So we're going to be a uh, pit stop ahead of them, kind of. Um, yeah, we've got Vettel right in front of us who's got already worn soft tires. But Norris ahead of him, which we have just gotten ahead of Vettel uh, with Latifi, actually. We should focus on Latifi a little bit. Yeah, Latifi has gotten ahead of Vettel, and he is looking at Norris who's going to have to pit in the next uh, lap or two here. Oh, we see that um, Albon is burning up his tires at the moment, so we're going to just kind of put him on uh, cons or back up, and then we'll just have him conserve once his tires get into range. All right, we've got pit stops at the front. Driver's pitting. We've got Norris all the way in the back. Norris has already overtaken Albon, so that's very unfortunate. Latifi is doing a very, very good job of just kind of holding on to his position here. All right, Albon has uh, caught back up to Latifi. We see Vettel is going to have to pit here. And Vettel is seven seconds behind us. We have to make these last until about lap 22, specifically on uh, Alex Albon. Uh, we're about halfway through the run, and we're about 50% on the tire, so we're looking uh, uh, potentially close on doing that. We've got a low fuel delta um, on both cars, but we're going to push to about, I'm going to say 1.5, just because we can. Yeah, Latifi is doing a very, very good job. So good on him for kind of showing up on this final race. All right, so we've got Albon, who's kind of building up tire heat here. We're going to let him go on a neutral to kind of just build up some heat. Hopefully get to uh, to neutral uh, on the tire temperatures. I really want to just have him one stop, but I feel like we're uh, potentially not in a position to do that. It uh, looks like Latifi's on the optimal strategy here. Yeah, Albon looks like he's going to have to uh, to stop this race. And I think uh, committing to that uh, strategy early is going to be the best bet here for uh, Albon, potentially. So we're going to go attack. We're going to let Albon pit in this lap onto the soft tire. All right, we're going to put them all onto medium engine mode. Let's see if he's doing a really good job with his tires. So Albon, we're going to wait until we can see what he... Uh, uh, we can kind of turn down his thing. We're going to have him conserve, at least for the beginning part of the run here. As he comes out, not too far behind Latifi. Got uh, Mick Schumacher all the way in the points, so... Uh, Haas might potentially take over Aston Martin here. If they do a good job, that would be a uh, an interesting finale here. Fortunately for us, it does not look like points are on the table. But we just hit lap 21. We're going to let Latifi kind of conserve a little bit. And hopefully get some tire temperature out of the car. Out of the tire. And we're going to just have him pit straight back onto a uh, set of mediums.
All right, we're going to have him push or attack, actually. We're going to have him pit this lap. New set of mediums. So we're going to have Latifi conserve just because he's in 20th place and he's got not much to lose. I'll just conserve until the tires hit very, very low temperature. A low fuel delta. They're both kind of crossing over that uh, threshold. Alrighty. Apparently hitting that a couple times doesn't do what I uh, expected it to do, but whatever. Alright, we're going to have Norris um, pitting here soon. He's uh, right ahead of us, so uh, Vettel is looking kind of rough on the tires. Hopefully Latifi can stick close enough to him to uh, uh, kind of threaten uh, his position here. Yeah, we need a safety car or something here to kind of uh, uh, help us, so... We're going to go here, and uh, if we got Vettel behind us on very, very worn um, medium tires, we're just going to back up Albon to just kind of get some of that temperature out of the tires, like I mentioned earlier. And we're going to put him back onto neutral. So Latifi's hanging about two seconds off of Vettel, so hopefully... Um, Vettel will not catch back up to uh, uh, Latifi after his pit stop. Um, just got to kind of keep our fingers crossed here and hope that we can uh, get some uh, good fortune. And we're going to put Albon on push just to kind of... Uh... Actually, about how many laps has he done on these set of tires? He's done about 12 laps on the tires, so... Uh, we're going to just have him push, and we're going to... We're going to just pit him this time. Put him onto the soft tire again. Just so he can kind of cover off Vettel. We're starting to get blue flags this time. Maybe that would have been a smart idea to wait until we got the blue flags. But we did not. Alrighty. We're good on fuel. At least for a little bit. So we are ahead of Vettel. Not by a lot. Latifi, he's right on Latifi. So Latifi probably just got the the flag there right as uh, Vettel pitted so that's unfortunate yeah we need more drivers to kind of fall back uh, into uh, other drivers that have uh, like 16th place uh, Sonoda who just pitted Need him to get caught back up with some uh, some blue flags here. So we're going to do some extra tire management with Albon. We're going to have him conserve. And then we're going to kind of push for a lap. Just kind of see what that does. See if we can kind of get him to uh, cut down on that gap on Stroll. Alright, so we're going to have him back up again. So we got three laps remaining. Albon is catching Stroll. We're going to have him go push. We're going to put both cars onto new medium engine mode. Albon is not really catching. It's close to. So this is the final lap, apparently. Alright, we need... 
Albon, yeah, Albon's not going to get him, and tire temperatures are getting too high. We can let Tifi push, and we finish 18th and 19th. So after the season finale at Yas Marina, we finish 18th and 19th. Uh, we do finish ahead of Vettel, so um, Aston Martin have kind of uh, fallen off near the end of the season, and uh, potentially that lo looks good for us uh, heading into the next season. Uh, we should be able to hopefully get some better uh, performance out of the car. And with Aston Martin kind of falling down the pecking order to where we've been able to kind of beat them on pace these final couple of races has been a uh, uh, very interesting so um your points uh for this race are um Juan Yu Zhou getting his first point um so only uh four drivers this year have not scored a point um Esteban Ocon finishing ninth Ricardo finishing eighth and Mick Schumacher two races in a row getting points and he gets six points so he is going to move Haas ahead of Aston Martin so that's a Incredible job by him. Uh, sixth place, Sergio Perez. Fifth place, George Russell. Uh, fourth place, Lewis Hamilton. Your podium, Max Verstappen. Uh, Carlos Sainz. And your winner, Charles Leclerc. So looking at the final driver standings, um, we uh, are the only team to not have either driver score points. Um, that was a concern of mine uh, kind of coming into this year, um, or the season, kind of just knowing that that was a possibility, but I was, um, yeah, disappointed not to be able to do so. Um, but, you know, that's the, that's, that's what makes this so hard is Williams is so far down the grid that you really have to just stick it out and grind. And that's what the season was. It was a grind. So, um, unfortunately we showed up with no points at the end of the season, but, uh, hopefully next year, um, we will be able to kind of rectify that and, uh, be able to challenge for some points and maybe even higher up the grid but so your point standings Mick Schumacher jumps all the way up to 14th he jumps ahead of Sebastian Vettel um, who is the uh, main points haver for Aston Martin uh, in your final standings Ocon gets ahead of Yuki Tsunoda those two have been bouncing back and forth um, with uh, Ocon just getting up into uh, a 12th uh, tying with Gasly but losing the tiebreaker uh, top of the board Max Verstappen, we've known that for a couple of races, is your world driver's champion. Leclerc is second in the Ferrari. Hamilton, uh, you know, just solidly in third place uh, with Perez, Sainz, and Russell um, allowing, uh, you know, two rival teams to kind of get in between them and their teammate. Um, unfortunate for them, but yeah, you've got the two McLaren boys in seventh and eighth kind of holding the fort down, and then Valtteri Bottas just absolutely just obliterating his teammate this year with 45 points while Guan Yu took all the way until the final race of the season to get points but uh yeah you got Alonzo 10th and we already got over Gasly Joe getting his points Magnuson Stroll join us with no points so looking at your team standings Red Bull are your Constructors Championship or constructor champion ferrari are second you have mercedes in third claren in fourth alpine in fifth alfatari in sixth uh, alfa romeo in seventh haas moving up to uh, eighth place with that uh just great job by uh mick schumacher getting up there and getting those six points so even if he didn't score points last time he would have been able to outscore the astons there um and then we finish at the bottom the only team without points so leaving Abu Dhabi, uh, we gain $1.3 million. That goes to the bank and will help us develop our car for next year. In Formula 2, the final round of the championship, uh, your winner was uh, or of the, the final race was Theo Porcher. Uh, your podium was Yuri Vips and Jehan Darubala. Um, yeah, looking through the results here, your championship contenders, you have Logan Sargent finishing in 6th, you have Dennis Hauger finishing in 7th, uh, Marcus Armstrong finished all the way down in 12th. And looking at the uh, the championship here, Dennis Hauger for Prema uh, was able to hang on and, you know, gain 
enough points because if he had finished another position below, I believe, um, he would have tied with uh, Armstrong. I'm not sure how the tiebreaker would have went. I think Hauger has more wins, but still very, very close battle, very tense. Um, would have been an awesome finale to watch on TV, uh, but Hauger is your Formula 2 champion. Uh, Armstrong is in second. Porsche is in third. He moves up to third as Logan Sargent moves down to fourth. Looking at your team standings, we knew this was close last time. High tech with um, Yuri Vips and um, actually their other driver, um, uh, Marcus Armstrong, didn't score points in that race. So uh, yeah, they uh, they were able to kind of maintain their lead from the uh the last race out uh despite one of their drivers not uh not finishing in the points but yeah high tech kind of coming up here and uh last two races just stealing it away from prema who led for most of the year and carlin who had it and that uh kind of that f uh three fourths mark of the season looking at formula three your winner of the final round at monza was james headley uh your podium louis foster and david schumacher uh, looking through the results here. Yeah, um, James Headley, not very loud this season. Um, really not somebody I was very just keeping an eye on. Uh, did a very good job winning the last race and um, jumped him up from whatever spot he was previously, but... Yeah, Ido Cohen, Ben Viscal, um, Small Yar. Small Yar was at the top for a while. Um, I think Kayo Colette was up there for a while. I know Ido was up there for a while. Um, Ido losing out by two points. He finished. Um, did he finish out of the points? He did. Or did he? Yeah, he did. 16th place. Just out of the points. Didn't even put up a good defense against Headley. If he had just scored two points he probably would have won the championship on a tiebreaker but looking over at the team championship uh campos with that result um of david schumacher and james headley were able to gain 40 whole points that final race and uh jump up and steal the uh constructors championship away from carlin who uh also got their uh, f2 title taken away so uh yeah this is uh that was a crazy result there I forgot Motorsport Manager did this, but this is, um, uh, it's going to go through like a little championship screen, but your, uh, your F1 world champion, Max Verstappen, uh, with Red Bull Racing, Constructors champion, Red Bull Racing with Verstappen and Perez. All right, so this is from the, uh, standing screen. I've kind of been contemplating what to do here, and, um, I think the best course of action is kind of not to go through the whole season and just kind of go over, um kind of the wins and you can kind of look at the, the championship standings as you want um yeah so for f1 red bull had 11 wins ferrari had nine mercedes got two and mclaren got one um looking at the breakdown verstappen got 11 Leclerc got eight hamilton got two signs got one ricardo got one um perez uh, is the highest highest finishing up driver without a win um and the red bull uh, he, he had a couple shots at doing it, but yeah, we just we didn't see anybody outside of uh, uh, Ricardo getting that shock win at Montreal, and then uh, Le Verstappen and Leclerc dominating until Sainz kind of broke the barrier. Um, yeah, on to F2. Uh, F2, you have Dennis Hauger um, with three wins. You've got Armstrong with two wins. You've got Porsche with two wins. You've got Sargent with two wins. You've got Tepe Notori two wins. Uh, Victor Martins is your highest up finisher with uh, without a win. You get Jack Duhon with a win. Uh, uh, Jehan Daravala. Sorry, that messed me up saying Duhon and then going Daravala. I thought I repeated myself. Um, and then uh, Roy Nassani got a win. Um, I don't think that should happen, but whatever. Um, looking at the uh, the championship uh, for the constructors, uh, High Tech got two wins. Carlin got two wins. Prima got four wins. RT got two wins, Trident got two wins, and Dams got one win, along with Virgil Bosi. Uh, teams without a win were MP, Van Amersport, and uh, Campos. Looking at F3, uh, Campos, uh, speaking of not having a win in F2, in F3, they finished top of the board with two wins. Um, Carlin had one win, Charus had two wins, 
Chenzer had two wins. ART was the highest finisher without a win. Trident got a win. High Tech got a win. Uh, Van Amersport and Prema. Prema finishing bottom of the table. Very, very um, unlike them. You know, they're typically the uh, the top dogs in uh, Formula 3. But looking at the Drivers' Championship, you had uh, uh, Headley uh, with two wins. Ido Cohen with one win. Then Viscal, one win. Uh, Smolyar with two wins. Uh, Kayo Collette with no wins, finishing in fifth. Uh, Stanek finishing with one win. Uh, Truly with one win. And uh, Uberon getting one win. But, yeah, I I would be interested to see kind of um, if I can go through and check kind of how far behind was... I don't even think I can do that. I wish I could go back. Um, I probably have to just go back into the last video, but I uh, kind of don't feel like doing that at the moment because there's just so many different championship stuff I could look up. But um, if you're interested and wanted to check it out, uh, look to see how far back James Headley was in the last episode. He was um, not even in the picture, in my opinion. I think he was very far back because Ito um, was very, very close to, uh, to Viscal, um, and Ito didn't even score a point in that last round. So... Uh, we're going to move on to the American Single Seaters, uh, IndyCar and Indy Lights. Uh, your championship winner is Pato Award with four wins. Uh, Joseph Newgarden finishing with three wins. Scott Dixon with Ganassi getting two. Grosjean getting one. Pagano getting two. Herta getting two. Rossi finishing seventh with no wins. Highest finisher without a win. Uh, Pelo finishing one win. Uh, Rosenquist no win. McLaughlin getting two. Looking down here, it doesn't look like anybody else got it. You've got Dalton Kellett at the bottom of the table with 46 points, very far off the rest of the field, including uh, Malukas, actually. Malukas and uh, Kellett are very, very far off. Uh, looking at the instructors, McLaren SP got four, Penske got five, Ganassi got three, uh, Napa Andretti got two, Meyer Shank got two, DHL Andretti got one, so three total for Andretti. Uh, Ganassi, second Ganassi got zero. Uh, that is the Ganassi with Erickson and Jimmy Johnson. Uh, looking at Indy Lights, uh, it looks very competitive. Look at all these wins. Barely anybody, only one driver with two two wins. But uh, yeah, you got Lind winning by uh, only eight points. A uh, very, very close battle here. Kind of this top little pack here. Um, yeah, the Constructors, you got HMD with one. Exclusive Motorsports with two. Uh, Andretti with three wins, Harlan with two wins, Global Racing with one win, the uh, second Andretti team with one win, so Andretti actually got four wins in that year. Uh, you got Junkos with no wins, the only team without a win, uh, but uh, Abel finishing uh, bottom of the table but with one win. Very competitive standings. Now, uh, for the World Endur Endurance Championship, I'm going to trust what it says for the Constructors' Championship here. Uh, there's only six races mentioned in the season um however um it doesn't really line up with what it's saying here for the uh for uh Pergeo. just there's some something weird happening here but toyota finishing with four wins uh 265 points 101 points ahead of uh, uh pujo We've got two wins uh united alpine glickenhaus and bicolas um all with no points but, um, yeah, looking here, it's uh, Menenez, Mazepin, and uh, DeResta all finishing with four wins. But if you look here, it's, um, you know, you have your positions here that kind of show um, and differentiate the drivers and the teams um, in the Drivers' Championship. But you've got four wins here, and then you get two wins here. So you're already at six wins, which is how many races there are in the year. Um, and then you get two wins here, and then you get two wins here. But... 164 points 164 points for some reason these three cars here like won the drivers championship but they didn't count towards the constructors championship which i'm very confused by and i don't know the reason why do you know the reason why uh comment why because i am i'm at a, a complete loss of words um for what could be the reason uh looking at uh that was hypercar this is lmp uh you've got dragon speed on top um, with two wins, you've got AF Corsa with one, you've got Team Penske with one, you've got Team WRT with two, uh, and then you have Prima and Europol at the bottom with no wins. Um, 
Yeah, but uh, different driver and constructor. You got Penske at the top with uh, Cameron, Collard, and Felipe Nasser. Uh, all finishing with 101 points ahead of Dragon Speed. Um, yeah, the second Penske car with Aubrey, Nato, and Bourdais uh, finished all the way down in eighth. So they just kind of had a, a one preferred car, as you see, Dragon Speed. Um, or actually, most of these teams, except for Hey, of course, uh, kind of favored one car. But uh, yeah, you got Juan Pablo Montoya in here. You got a bunch of good drivers in here. Um, yeah, so that concludes kind of all the different championships. Um, I'm going to back out so I can kind of get the F1 stuff back on screen. Um, I, I'm i not sure what I want to do with the next episode. I've mentioned this before, but um, I think I'm going to kind of just simulate through once. Um, just to kind of see what happens and then kind of go forward with what I think I should do. Um, I do like kind of a natural feel of just seeing watching the top teams kind of hire who they want or fire who they want. But I really do want to have some sort of realism to um, this experience. Um, and I'll only really um, kind of influence what happens in F1. I won't mess with um, IndyCar or the WEC or whatever if I, if I find uh, it's not worth it. Or if I find there's a problem um, with kind of changing stuff and it kind of makes the game unplayable, I think we'll just kind of stick through with kind of an unrealistic F1 grid for next year. Um, I've done some testing where I've hired um, or I've simulated ahead um, in the middle of the season and just decided to go hire, you know, um, you know, science and Perez just to see what Red Bull would do. Um, and they hired two drivers who um, don't have super licenses, who um, are very, very old. It's a no known thing is for some reason this, the, the big teams favor older drivers. Um, so I'll simulate through. And um, next episode, you kind of get an answer on what will be done for the series and how we'll go forward with it. But uh, yeah, we will just kind of sign who we will sign and kind of see um, how the driver market moves um, after my little experiment but a uh, bit of a long-winded end of the episode but if you liked what you saw here um, like comment subscribe all the dumb youtuber stuff and i hope you had a good day